we have to put in place an infrastructure, not just here at home, but globally, that allows us to see it quickly, isolate it quickly, respond to it quickly. So that if and when a new strain of flu like the Spanish flu crops up, five years from now or a decade from now, we've made the investment. And we're further along to be able to catch it. The funding we're asking for is needed to keep strengthening our capacity here at home so we can respond to any future Ebola cases. It's needed to help us partner with other countries to prevent and deal with future outbreaks and threats before they become epidemics. We were lucky with H1N1 that it did not prove to be more deadly. Uh, we can't say we're lucky with Ebola because obviously it's having a devastating effect in, effect in West Africa, but it is not airborne in its transmission. There may and likely will come a time in which we have both an airborne disease that is deadly. And in order for us to deal with that effectively, we have to put in place an infrastructure, not just here at home, but globally, that allows us to see it quickly, isolate it quickly, respond to it quickly. So that if and when a new strain of flu, like the Spanish flu, crops up five years from now or a decade from now, we've made the investment. And we're further along to be able to catch it. It is a smart investment for us to make. It's not just insurance, it is knowing that down the road we're going to continue to have problems like this, particularly in a globalized world, where you move from one side of the world to the other in a day. So this is important now, but it's also important for our future and our children's future and our grandchildren's future. I cannot think of a better example of an area where we should all agree than passing this emergency funding to fight Ebola and to set up some of the public health infrastructure that we need to deal with potential outbreaks in the future. You know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat, as the heat comes in. Uh, typically, that will go away in April. At this moment, we think we have it very much in hand. Dr. Fauci said earlier this week that the lag in testing was, in fact, a failing. Do you take responsibility for that? Yeah, no, I don't take responsibility at all. You said that you don't take responsibility, but you did disband the White House pandemic office, and the officials that were working in that office left this administration abruptly. So what responsibility do you take to that? And the officials that worked in that office said that you that the White House lost valuable time because that office wasn't disbanded. What do you make of that? Well, I just think it's a nasty question because what we've done is, uh, and Tony had said numerous times that uh, we've saved thousands of lives because of the quick closing. Uh, and when you say me, I didn't do it. Uh, we have a group of people. I could, I could ask perhaps my administration, but I could perhaps ask uh, Tony about that because uh, I don't know anything about. Uh, some of the people we cut, they haven't been used for many, many years. And if we, they, if we have a need, and we can get them very quickly. And rather than spending the money, and I'm a business person, I don't like having thousands of people around when you don't need them.